Hello and welcome to the third video in this series, which is the second part of the user interface for Fantasy Crowns. Uh, so you can see we've started up Fantasy Crowns, uh, we've opened up a few more modules, uh, the three core rulebooks as well as Wallow's Guide to Monsters and Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Uh, and we've also trimmed down the, uh, the buttons here on the right hand side, because uh, these are the ones that we want to specifically talk about. So we don't need the library at this stage, so let's close that and open up our first button, the Images and Maps. Now the first thing we see is up at the top here, uh, we have got uh, a group, uh, and we've got a drop down menu, and we can filter on these groups. Uh, so we can, for example, see all of the images. We can also then go to the artwork for the Dungeon Master's Guide, or we could go to the artwork for the uh, Player's Handbook. So each of these groups down here uh, you can use to filter out particular aspects uh, of the um, books that you have or the modules that you have open. You've also got new, which of course in this case is completely blank because we don't have uh, anything new. If we wanted to create a new image or map, we would go down to the edit list button here and we can uh, add an item and this will give you a blank grey map. Uh, you can, of course, use this uh, if you wanted to, uh, because there are some drawing tools which are available, which you can click on here in the drawing, and then you can uh, draw uh, rough shapes on here. Uh, you can also right-click over here, as you can with any map, and if you go to Layers, you can set a grid, and you just pull the grid out and set it to whatever amount you want, and you will get a grid which you can then drop uh, NPCs and player characters on, and you can create combat and all that kind of thing on there. Uh, however, mo ma mostly you'll be using other kinds of maps. Uh, let's get rid of that one. Uh, if we wanted to add a map to here or any kind of image, uh, we click on the folder icon. Uh, this will bring up uh, a normal blank uh, Windows um, a file, or uh, folder I should say, and we can then uh, find a map somewhere else and just drag and drop it in here and then when we uh, go back into here we can see we've got a village map here, we can click on it and we have a new map and again we can right click on this, we can uh, go to the layers menu, we can set a grid as to whatever size we want, let's make it uh, 100 and we now have a grid on it. And you can also, if you right click on here, share this map with your players or share this image with your players by clicking on the sharing and then uh, share sheet. Uh, your players will now uh, be able to see that map appear on their uh, uh, client. Um, this uh, the map then uh, you'll now, now see a P, and if we mouse over it, it means it's public. We'll be able to see a P over the, that, that map, um, and if we wanted to stop sharing it, we would just simply click on the P and it'll go away and the map will no longer be shared. Um, down at the bottom uh, of the screen, as in just about every other uh, window that we'll see, uh, there is a line which you can type. Uh, so if you uh, just simply type in uh, COM, for example, it'll start to filter out uh, which, whichever uh, it is. And uh, in this particular group, if we change this group to uh, all, then we'll see a lot more options across all of the uh, items that we've got open or all the modules that we've got open. Um, um, so that's more or less it for uh, images. Uh, we might come on to some more detail about maps uh, in a later video. If we now have a wee look at tables, again this is pretty much the same kind of window as you uh, will have uh, seen previously. Uh, it just gives you a list of tables. Again, up in the group here you can see that we've got various headings, so if we wanted to see the tables that were in a world of our own from the Dungeon Master's Guide Chapter 1, uh, here they are. We can just open the table by clicking on one of them, and we can make a roll by just clicking on the roll button, and you'll see that the result comes into the chat window. 
if we have a look at, uh, let's say, a treasure table, uh, let's filter this out, the magic item table A from the Dungeon Master's Guide. If we change the output here from chat by clicking on it to partial and then click on the roll, uh, it will automatically create a treasure partial with the result. You can see down the bottom here it says results spell scroll level 1 and it's actually worked out what the spell scroll actually is. This is a scroll of Greece. We can click on this icon to get information on the scroll of Greece, and then we can click on this image here to give us details about the uh, the image that's attached to it, and we can click on this and we can actually get to the spell as well. So all of that uh, kind of thing has been set up with the core rule books. There's uh, many things like this that uh, are within the basic interface uh, of Fantasy Grounds. If we close this, we'll notice that the magic item table A now has a little pen and paper or a pen and a book icon on it, whereas all the other ones have simply got a, a book icon. This means that we've edited that because we changed the output here to parcel. Uh, we should really change it back to chat. Um, uh, but if we wanted to uh, revert the change in that, then we can just simply right click over this book and pen icon, select revert changes, and that'll do away with our uh, change uh, that we made. Uh, that's probably about as much as we can uh, for tables. Uh, if we then look at NPCs, uh, this is very similar again, uh, except we've got a few more filters uh, here. We can see all of us kind of scroll down here. Most of these are from the Monster Manual, but there's the odd one from Volo's Guide, etc. And again, we can do a broad filter up here by, for example, just uh, filtering out the monsters from the player's handbook. Uh, or we can just see the ones from uh, Volo or Xanathar or whatever. In addition to that, if we set this back to all, we can change how we actually see or how these are listed. At the moment it's listed by letter and therefore alphabetical, but we can also uh, get a list of monsters by challenge rating. So as we can see here, uh, we've got all the challenge rating zero monsters. The two buttons down the bottom, plus or minus, expand or contract the uh, filters. So if we click on the negative, we can uh, get just a list of the challenge ratings and we can then click on, say, challenge rating 11. And this will open up all the NPCs uh, with a challenge rating of 11 from all the manuals uh, or all the uh, modules that we have uh, open. Uh, clicking on one of these will bring up the NPC sheet. Uh, if we click on the other tab, uh, we'll get more information. And we'll, uh, any links here, we can just click on these links and we can get to whatever the link is. Most often it'll be to uh, some kind of um, uh, image, for example, of the, the bee here. And again, these images can be shared with players by right-clicking and uh, selecting Share. Uh, in addition to, if we go that way, if addition, we can also uh, filter by type. And again, if we click this minus button here, these are all the different types of monsters that uh, are available within across all of the modules that we have open. And if we wanted to look at humanoids, for example, uh, we can see that there's only one. If we can see humanoid dwarf, etc. So all of these are all the different types of uh, monsters that we have. Uh, oozes, etc. And again, we just click on one to find to find it. Uh, you can have more granular um, uh, control over this by using the filters down at the bottom here. We have got a challenge rating and we've got a type filter. So if we set our challenge rating to 2, for example, and then we go into the type uh, and we pick, uh, let's say, uh, I'll try to find, let's say, an ooze, uh, then these are all the challenge rating 2 oozes that there are across all the modules that we have uh, open. Um, uh, okay, I think that's it for NPCs. If we then go on to items, uh, we find that this is uh, very similar uh, to the NPCs ones and that we've got a number of filters. We've got the usual filter up here so we can see uh, what items are from the player's handbook and which one is in Bola's Guide to Monsters, uh, or we can see them all. 
We also have various buttons up here which we can click on and this will filter out all armors. Uh, and these are the armors for across all the modules that we have open. So therefore there will be uh, duplicates within this because sometimes uh, uh, an item might appear in two uh, or more uh, modules. So these are all the armors including any magical armors which you can see from the uh, Dungeon Master's Guide. Uh, similar thing uh, for weapons, uh, you can open that up and that gives you all of the weapons which are available across all the modules that we uh, can see. Uh, again, we've got these buttons down here so we can, uh, can track this and we can uh, then have a look down and say, well, let's just look at hand axes um, or we can look at uh, malls or whatever it is. And we can click the plus to expand it back out again. Also down at the bottom here, uh, we have a type filter box with a drop down menu. And these are all the types of uh, items which are, again, across all the books that we have open. So if we wanted, for example, just to see the tools, then uh, we can do that to get the list of all the tools which are available from uh, all the modules that are open. And of course, we have our uh, search here, so we can just type in a uh, flute, for example, and uh, it'll come up with just the flutes. Uh, okay, uh, let's have a look at the uh, Forge button then. Uh, let's open this up and we've got the Magic Item Forge. Um, what we can do here is to create uh, Magic Items which uh, don't exist in the game. Uh, we do this by dragging in a piece of equipment into the left hand side and a Magic Item template into the right hand side. So uh, just to demonstrate that, let's uh, open up the armor from the uh, player's handbook and let's just drag in leather uh, into the equipment. Uh, and then we click on this templates button here to get all the uh, different templates that we have available. Uh, we can filter this out to uh, armor, so it only shows us that the uh, armor that we have. And uh, let's just uh, drag in the armor of invulnerability. And then we just click on the Forge Magic item, and we now have Leather Armor of Invulnerability. Uh, so that's the uh, item Forge, uh, and that's what the item templates uh, are for. The uh, thing here is that the item of equipment must be uh, the same type as the uh, Magic Item template. So you can't, uh, for example, have a weapon in here with armor in here. Uh, these have to be the, uh, the same type. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, that's the Magic Item Forge. Uh, as with just about every uh, template or every uh, window that we've seen so far, you'll have seen this little uh, button, edit list button. We can click on that and we can click on this green button and this will uh, open up a window which enables us to create a new item. This can be done in any of these windows. If we look at the NPC one, for example, we've got a window a button here and we will get a blank NPC window. And this is how we would create an NPC from scratch. Uh, and this is how we would create a new item. So uh, it's fully able, Fantasy Grounds is fully able to uh, accommodate any items which you want to create or NPCs or anything else really uh, within the, uh, within the, the game. Uh, now, I'm not sure why Feats is here. We're going to miss that out. Uh, the last one that I really wanted to talk about was Tokens, and this is exactly the same as the library to many, uh, and for many purposes. We click on that, uh, we see that we've got the Tokens uh, bag. Now, what opens up here will depend on what you have, but uh, if we mouse over this, it see, we can see that the Token bags that are in here are from the modules that I have open. So, for example, we've got the Dungeon Master's Guide, Monster Manual, Player's Handbook, etc. If we uh, click on uh, double click on these bags, uh, you'll see all the tokens that are available. This is the one from the Player's Handbook. We can click uh, this uh, back button. Uh, let's click on the Monster Manual, and here are all the tokens uh, from the Monster Manual. Now, you may have some other tokens or other token modules or tokens you've made yourself or purchased, and you can click on the Modules button. And this will open up all the modules in the uh, token module activation window. Uh, uh, and all of these would contain modules of some kind or another. Uh, 
and you just load these up in exactly the same way as you would do normal modules click on the load button and then when you close that up go back to up here you'll find that there will be an animal tokens bag which you can then double click on and here's our animal tokens you can also see buttons down here for GM and shared uh, if we click on these this will take us to um, a folder within your FG data you can put uh, token modules in here uh, or sorry tokens in here you can also put them in a shared folder which is there which will share it with the players it's strongly advised that you don't do any of that because you will end up with memory issues especially at the player side if you have a lot of tokens in the shared folder so I would avoid that if you can uh, OK, I think that's it for this video and we'll finish off the user interface in the next video. Thanks for watching.